Hello and welcome back to the vault. I'm the Gav Major, and this is a review of the premium tier six pan European destroyer. Destroy, I should say, ORP Orkan. Uh, now, this is a tier 6 and 7 game of Capture the Base on Land of Far. The enemy team we have a Shashio, a Kagero, a Muchin, Atlanta, Azuma. A division consisting of two Edinburghs, which potentially could be concerning because one of them might run radar. Nagato and a Turpitz spawned on the right, and we're just going to do a little bit of scouting up the right hand flank as per always. So, uh, ORP Orkin uh, was originally constructed and launched as HMS Myrmidon. Uh, now, she was launched in March 1942, and her construction was funded by the town of St. Helens in Merseyside um, as part of Warships Week. Uh, however, she was then transferred to the Free Polish Navy in November 1942, where she operated on numerous convoy escort duties until she was sunk by a German acoustic homing torpedo, um, which um, sunk her in October 1943. I think we're going to take advantage of this Gagero. Going to use our British rudder to get around that one. Go. That's the um, the Orkin doing very much what she's very good at, which is engaging enemy destroyers. Now we are in radar range of the Atlanta, which is a potential concern, but if we can just keep kiting, now if she had her head screwed on, she would be using her radar right now. But we're outside radar range, and so the moment has passed. Zuma, potentially AFK. So we'll see what she, we can tempt her with. Unless the Kagera is sorted. Well, I can't complain about that. So, uh, we're cracking on with the review after that minor distraction, uh, where we'll be doing a comparison of the ship to the Tech Tree. Uh, destroyers. Um, so, when it comes to survivability, you have an above average uh, HP of 15,700, uh, which would put you as the third best at the tier. Now, when it comes to the armor scheme, you are the usual tin can armor scheme, so nothing exactly special in those regards. Oh, the Kigera smoke rings actually disappeared. But I think we'll see if we can take advantage of this situation here and get the Azuma on fire. Because we know he's uh, had to sort some flooding out, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I guess you could say. Oh, now I've got two fires on her. She's got us picked up on sonar. Go on, there's another torpedo, and her guns are looking the wrong way. Even the secondary guns tickling. There we go. I can't complain about that. However, it looks like our left flank is completely collapsed, so I will be making a move over to that flank. So, apologies about that. Continuing with the artillery. Um, so obviously we do have that one four inch secondary gun in in replacement of one of our torpedo launchers, which was quite common on uh, British destroyers during World War II, as they found that the anti-aircraft complement of destroyers was a little bit lacking. And so uh, replacing one of the torpedo launchers with a four inch uh, secondary gun was actually quite common. Um, she also has six 4.7 inch guns in three dual gun turrets. We have A turret, B turret super firing up front, and then we have Y turret at the rear. Now, these turrets do uh, 360 rotation which does mean it can be quite helpful in regards to uh, your positioning and engagements it means you can kite on your stern as well as your bow 
And these turrets do have a very good, uh, actually the fastest turret rotation for the tier, at 9 seconds per 180 degrees of rotation. Now you do have a better than average reload speed of 5 seconds, which is uh, quite nifty. And now you have a just below average HE shell damage of 1750. You also have the joint best fire chance at 9%. Uh, you've also got just below average AP shell damage of 2,250. When it comes to the DPMs, obviously uh, combining your shell damages with your rate of fire, you are looking at having the second best HE DPM, third best AP DPM, and the best fires per minute. So uh, then the guns aren't slacking, is uh, the best way to put it. Obviously, torpedo launchers only got the one quadruple launcher. Um, that's a little bit of a downside. It would always be nice just to have a, a little bit more... Uh, punch if you could uh, however um, it's kind of like the torpedoes is where this ship gets let down a little bit I guess you could say and let's just focus on this and we'll just see if we can get away from these two Edinburgh's not too concerned about the fire right now because that only means my detect speed will go up to 7 kilometers, and there's not really anything within. Okay, now we can put the fire out, because I know I'm not going to get hit by anything else. Let's see what we can do with that. Might have to use our motoring and get a little bit of a move on. So yes, we were talking about the torpedoes. Um, you do have the fastest launch reload of 70 seconds and the fastest reload per tube, which is 17.5 seconds. However, the torpedoes are the lowest damage, only doing 10,700 damage each. They do have a large detectability of 1.6 kilometers and an above average range of 9 kilometers and an above average speed of 65 knots. When it comes to the maneuverability, obviously she's got very British style maneuverability, so you are looking at being the. wow, well, slow. So second slowest at 35 knots, however you do have the joint second smallest turning circle of 590 meters and joint second fastest rudder shift of 3.1 seconds. Now concealment wise is quite nice, you have a just better than average detectability by C of 6.9 kilometers base, obviously you can tune that right down using the uh, pan-European commander and uh, inspirations and consume uh, about not consumables but you got your permanent camouflage and your um modules as well now you are second worst from the air which is uh, 3.4 kilometers and uh, best in smoke at 2.4 kilometers now i would like it if one of these Edinburghs would pop a smoke screen then i could kind of ignore it However, I don't think I'm going to have this opportunity. Now, uh, going on to the consumables, obviously we have an engine boost, which will, right, you've got two of those. They will improve your engine speed by 8% for uh, 120 seconds, taking your base speed from, well, taking your base speed up to 37.8 knots. Obviously, that does partially get better uh, through inspirations and booster flags and things like that. You also have uh, two radar consumables. These will have a range of nine kilometers, so any ships with nine kilometers will be spotted. It has a 15 second duration, which is a little short. Uh, however, it has a 180 second reload. And for a destroyer to have that radar access, uh, it's actually really quite nice. Um, it does make a very good at being uh, a knife fighter against destroyers. Uh, does mean she's a little lacking though when it comes up against uh, well, because you haven't got smoke because you haven't got smoke you have to be very cautious of your engagements now obviously these uh, cruisers are zigzagging Full circle the other way. Time to 
time to use that brushless acceleration. When it comes to modules, uh, obviously aiming systems um, is always the first pick, which will then be uh, shortly followed by the propulsion systems, um, which is actually quite nice considering that um, due to um, most tech tree, well, pretty much all their tech tree British destroyers not being able to take propulsion systems. Um, the ability to be able to take that as a premium is actually quite nice because you do have that British acceleration uh, and then concealment module because obviously you are playing that concealment game when it comes up against um, other destroyers. Um, nice little trick I did there was uh, I just wait for the Edinburgh to disappear into her, her smoke screen then uh, radared her for the Edinburgh, for, well, for the Odin so that was actually a quite a cheeky little trick. Um, we don't necessarily need to go win harder, however we do have that advantage being the only destroyer left in the game so I can go seek and destroy the enemy uh, turpits which isn't too bad. So uh, we'll go see what we can do. Um, so I guess a little bit of background, obviously the L and M class destroyers, uh, they're practically the same, uh, very minor differences, obviously the M class were a slightly later batch. Now. Most of them were equipped with three 4.7 inch dual gun turrets, however some of them were alternatively equipped with four dual gun 4.5 inch turrets. Um, the reason being is obviously the supply of the 4.7 inch gun turrets um, it was obviously a little bit stored because of development time and also a little bit hindered as well by the uh, war going on and how that affected supplies and things like that and there were some issues with those turrets when they originally uh, were um, basically started to be built and released and things like that. Now um, when it comes to the replacing the torpedo launcher for the oh, another four, well, a single 4 inch anti-aircraft gun that was actually quite common. Uh, in fact, uh, HMS Gallant, uh, another premium ship in the game, is an example of where that actually also happened. However, she's not represented in game with that. Uh, I guess another one would be uh, HMS Cossack is a good representation of the uh, gun turret being replaced. Uh, in that case, uh, one of the uh, dual gun 4.7 inch gun turrets has been replaced with a uh, dual gun 4.5 inch gun turret. Uh, again, just to improve that anti aircraft complement. Now, um, Orkin uh, will also have a slightly later war anti-aircraft complement in comparison to most tech tree uh, destroyers. So in this case uh, she will have some additional 20mm Ehrlichin. Now that's not exactly anything amazing, that is mostly short range AA, um, however it is a little bit more. She will still only come with the single quad pom pom which was fitted to most destroyers. Um, now her main battery should be dual purpose and so when it comes to her long range anti-aircraft capability uh, you should be looking at being able to chuck up quite a few uh, flag clouds. Um, so in the long term her anti-aircraft capability is going to be reasonable I guess you could say for the tier however um, she does have that large detectability which is possibly going to be a hindrance because that means that she can be obviously spotted by aircraft um, from further away and then she's also not going to have a smoke screen so that lack of a smoke screen is going to mean that she's not going to be able to disengage from aircraft as easy as some of the other tech tree uh, destroyers I guess you could say. I guess also furthermore she um, does have the slightly about well, the slight lack of not having so many torpedoes she's only got the one torpedo launcher and then those torpedoes don't really hit that hard either so that kind of reduces her utility I guess you could say against say battleships however against destroyers she is great in this case uh, getting four kills um, mopping up the turbis at the end 65,000 damage nothing amazing but got first blood and killed two destroyers very much what I need to do as an orc I guess you could say team results top of the team can't complain really with that economy wise obviously as a tier 6 premium ship she does have that reduced ship service cost so in this case only 78,000 so in this case with a common credit booster and a premium account I'm able to walk away with over half a million credits uh, which is 
quite nice quite nice can't complain about that well i hope you have enjoyed this and if you have feel free to give it a thumbs up as always down in the description is going to be the modules and the commander build used with this uh, organ and um it should be noted that at the moment obviously we don't have the pan-european tech tree out as yet therefore we don't have the commanders out however if you do purchase the organ uh, you and you don't already have uh, the Bisca Bisca, um, then you will be granted uh, Swerdsky, which is the uh, Polish uh, commander whose base trait does reduce um, concealment of all ships, which is actually quite a nice little trait. In this case, it's very helpful with a ship which um, is reliant on not having smoke. Well, uh, as this is a Patreon uh, video, I guess you could say, because it is a premium supply, uh, premium ship, then the uh, Patreon's names will be appearing on the end screen. As always, down in the description is linked to Patreon if you want to support the channel on Patreon, and the email address to the channel if you want to send in any of your own game captures. Until next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the pool. Hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the Galloping Major. Bumpity, 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 Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, clear the way, here comes the galloping